everyone, and welcome back to this week's Museum Show and Tell Show. I'm Nicole Jackson from the Penitentiary Museum. I'm here with Jan from the Penitentiary Museum Hi. and Genevieve from Peroni Museum. So in last Hi. week's... Uh, Last week's challenge, uh, we challenged Heroni Museum to find artifacts that um, kids seem to gravitate towards while they're in our gallery spaces or in our exhibits. And so because we challenged you, we're gonna go first. So Jan, what do we have today? Well, we kind of thought long and hard about it because um, we wanted to kind of make it gender neutral. I wanted to make it gender neutral, but there are some things that boys do tend to gravitate towards and the girls tend to but they both seem to gravitate towards this one specific item and that is our little I took a picture of it because it's too big to drag to my desk um our post office system that we have in our sitting in our general store so it's actually in three parts right now there probably was many many more parts to it but these are stackable and as you can see, they all have little doors with their own little keys. And the kids love them because the little key opens the door. And so we tend to leave some letters in there so that they, uh -huh. they find little letters that are in there. So we have this one in our general store area because that's, of course, general stores were a central part of the community. It was um, not just a place where you would buy specific <laughs> items or uh, maybe barter or, um, I don't know, it was farm equipment, it was all kinds of stuff. But um, it was also a great meeting place, a, ve a very social place. And uh, you would gather there, uh, you could play probably a game of checkers and women would have little chats. It's not like you, you were spread far out so you weren't visiting each other all the time. And when you came to town, it was a great time to catch up on what was happening. So like I said, we have this one in our general store um, and just a little bit of history about post offices in Penetanguishing. Uh, the very first one that we're aware of was in Andrew Mitchell's fur trading operation that was down on Water Street and Owen Street back in the very early 1830s. He had migrated from Drummond Island with his father, Dr. Mitchell, who was head surgeon out at um, Naval Base, military base, and his brother came with them. Also, their mother had died and was up, buried up on St. Joseph Island. So Andrew had his fur trading business and that's where the first post office was. And he did go out of business. He went bankrupt actually a number of years later. And I suppose that um, our post office moved around quite a bit, um, probably in other merchants. But then we did have this one this brick one oh. on Simcoe Street. And judging by the picture, and I can see down the street here, the green block is way down here on the corner. Oh. So probably this is probably taken in the 1880s at some point. And then I guess this one existed until the next one came along in 1931 which was built where the French Community Center is now. Oh, <laughs> and um, it was, <laughs> I didn't notice you were gone and then you were back. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, so it was built there, which had been the stables for the Canada House. And that was built in 1931 and was in operation until 1976. And now, of course, we have our current smaller station further down on Main Street. But yeah, this is the one that the kids love. They love the keys. They love the little open doors. And it's in our general store area. Oh, so that's, yeah. So what do your kids like? Yes. Okay. So I've got this photograph here. Um, in the early, uh, the 1980s, in the early 1990s, the Smithsonian's National Museum of Natural History had a life-size fiberglass triceratops that was across the road. It, they had installed it across the road from 
the museum and it was always swarming with children. It wasn't so much popular for pedagogical reasons, but rather <laughs> because it made a great uh, climbing uh, equipment. We at Huronia Museum have our very own, his name was Uncle Beasley. Uh, we have our very own Uncle Beasley and it is this. Yes, yes. <laughs> uh, it is a, a navigational aid, it's a buoy. And uh, in case you don't know how large it is, we put a banana right there for scale, oh. so it is quite big. Um, so there's the one. Unfortunately, we don't have a photo of it covered with children, but it's very, very popular. Uh, this is another view. There you go again with our banana. And this is uh, an empty space and the kids like to crawl up into there. It's usually covered once a kid sees it. It's hard to get them into the museum doors uh, once, they, uh, once they see that climbing, I don't know, apparatus out on the lawn. Um, <laughs> That was given to us by the Canadian Coast Guard. And of course, if any one of you have been out on the bay, you've seen um, lots and lots of those navigational markers. Uh, they were and still continue to be removed in the winter once the uh, shipping season's over. And then they're um, brought uh, to Midland, a lot of them, or different stations, I suppose, the Canadian Coast Guard Station up in Perry Sound uh, was a, another storage area, but they were for a very long time kept on the uh, dock downtown Midland along the waterfront. Here's a photo of them with the, I think it's the, um, it might be the C.P. Edwards and the Simcoe, two of the Canadian Coast Guard um, tenders and uh, they would take the buoys up in the winter and bring them back out uh, in the springtime. So that is probably our most popular artifact. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's nothing to do with education yeah. at all. Yes, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> we didn't ask for that. No. <laughs> That's we interesting. Have, actually, though. we do have signs. You can probably see we do have two signs, uh, or we did have two signs. Uh, we put them up repeatedly, uh, two interpretive signs, but they're continually taken and down. So that just tells you um, how unimportant the educational factor is. I mean, that's, yeah, that's something when you do these outdoor artifacts, that's the danger of it. And yeah. I know. Thinking of that, we do have a, an 1879 steam engine on our grounds that for many years was the playground for anybody that uh -huh. walked around. And so eventually we did, we, we had it um, sort of conserved a little bit. Um, and, uh, and then we put an enclosure on it and a door so that at least we can control it, you know, during, you know, so no one was coming there in the, in the off hours um, <laughs> to uh, climb all over it. But yes, we had the signs too, and uh, people <laughs> during the day seem to ignore those signs too. So hopefully they're appreciating it while they're climbing all over. <laughs> so hard that's to right. <laughs> That's uh, so yeah, that's interesting. We both had things that probably you wouldn't realize were such a popular item, you know, at our place, but um, it's funny how um, certain artifacts people gravitate towards. Uh, so right. what is our theme for next week? How about something that is circular or round? Those are two oh. very different circular or round artifacts. Very, that's a very good one. We're actually, I think we're almost at our one year anniversary that's of right. doing this um, show and tell show. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. So I think next week is our is our one year anniversary. Oh, so goodness. maybe we'll bring okay. some party hats or something to celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you again next week on our museum show and tell show. So bye. Bye, everyone.